This article discusses the history of the principle of least action. For the application, please refer to action. The principle of least action a euro, or, more accurately, the principle of stationary action a euro is a variational principle that, when applied to the action of a mechanical system, can be used to obtain the equations of motion for that system. In relativity, a different action must be minimized or maximized. The principle can be used to derive Newtonian, Lagrangian, Hamiltonian equations of motion, and even general relativity. It was historically called least, because its solution requires finding the path that has the least change from nearby paths. Its classical mechanics and electromagnetic expressions are a consequence of quantum mechanics, but the stationary action method helped in the development of quantum mechanics. The principle remains central in modern physics and mathematics, being applied in the theory of relativity, quantum mechanics and quantum field theory, and a focus of modern mathematical investigation in Morse theory. Morpitui principle and Hamilton's principle exemplify the principle of stationary action. The action principle is preceded by earlier ideas in surveying and optics. Rope stretchers in ancient Egypt stretched corded ropes to measure the distance between two points. Ptolemy, in his geography, emphasized that one must correct for deviations from a straight course. In ancient Greece, Euclid wrote in his Catoptica that, for the path of light reflecting from a mirror, the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. Hero of Alexandria later showed that this path was the shortest length and least time. Scholars often credit Pierre Louis Maupertuis for formulating the principle of least action because he wrote about it in 1744 and 1746. However, Leonhard Euler discussed the principle in 1744, and evidence shows that Gottfried Leibniz preceded both by 39 years. In 1932, Paul Dirac discerned the quantum mechanical underpinning of the principle in the quantum interference of amplitudes, for macroscopic systems, the dominant contribution to the apparent path is the classical path, while any other path is possible in the quantum realm. General Statement The starting point is the action, denoted, of a physical system. It is defined as the integral of the Lagrangian L between two instants of time t1 and t2. Technically a functional of the n generalized coordinates q equals which define the configuration of the system, where the dot denotes the time derivative, and t is time. Mathematically the principle is, where i means a small change. In words this reads, the path taken by the system between times t1 and t2 is the one for which the action is stationary to first order. In applications the statement and definition of action are taken together. The action and Lagrangian both contain the dynamics of the system for all times. The term path simply refers to a curve traced out by the system in terms of the coordinates in the configuration space, that is the curve Q, T, parameterized by time. Origins, statements, and controversy. Equals Fermat equals. In the 1600s. Pierre de Fermat postulated that light travels between two given points along the path of shortest time, which is known as the principle of least time or Fermat's principle. Equals more Pichui equals. Credit for the formulation of the principle of least action is commonly given to Pierre Louis Maupichui, who felt that nature is thrifty in all its actions, and applied the principle broadly. The laws of movement and of rest deduced from this principle being precisely the same as those observed in nature. We can admire the application of it to all phenomena. The movement of animals, the vegetative growth of plants, are only its consequences. And the spectacle of the universe becomes so much the grander, so much more beautiful, the worthier of its author, when one knows that a small number of laws, most wisely established, suffice for all movements. This notion of more pichui, although somewhat deterministic today, does capture much of the essence of mechanics. In application to physics, Maupertuis suggested that the quantity to be minimized was the product of the duration of movement within a system by the vis viva, which is the integral of twice what we now call the kinetic energy T of the system. Equals Euler equals, Leonhard Euler gave a formulation of the action principle in 1744, in very recognizable terms, in the editamentum 2 to his Methodus in Venendi Linus curvas maxime mine of proprietate gordants. 
beginning with the second paragraph, as Euler states, an MVDS is the integral of the momentum over distance traveled, which, in modern notation, equals the reduced action. Thus, Euler made an equivalent and independent statement of the variational principle in the same year as Maupertuis, albeit slightly later. Curiously, Euler did not claim any priority, as the following episode shows. Equals disputed priority equals, Maupertuis priority was disputed in 1751 by the mathematician Samuel Carr paragraph Nick, who claimed that it had been invented by Gottfried Leibniz in 1707. Although similar to many of Leibniz's arguments, the principle itself has not been documented in Leibniz's works. Carl Paragraph Nick himself showed a copy of a 1707 letter from Leibniz to Jacob Hermann with the principle, but the original letter has been lost. In contentious proceedings, Carl Paragraph Nick was accused of forgery, and even the King of Prussia entered the debate, defending Maupertuis, while Voltaire defended Carl Paragraph Nick. Euler, rather than claiming priority, was a staunch defender of Maupertuis, and Euler himself prosecuted Carl Paragraph Nig for forgery before the Berlin Academy on April 13, 1752. The claims of forgery were re-examined 150 years later, and archival work by C. I. Gerard in 1898 and W. Cabots in 1913 uncovered other copies of the letter, and three others cited by Carl Paragraph Nig, in the Bernoulli archives. Further development, Euler continued to write on the topic. In his reflection sur Cuex Loix Generals de la Nature, he called the quantity effort. His expression corresponds to what we would now call potential energy, so that his statement of least action in statics is equivalent to the principle that a system of bodies at rest will adopt a configuration that minimizes total potential energy. Equals Lagrange and Hamilton equals. Much of the calculus of variations was stated by Joseph Louis Lagrange in 1760 and he proceeded to apply this to problems in dynamics. In Ma Copyright Chenique Analytique Lagrange derived the general equations of motion of a mechanical body. William Rowan Hamilton in 1834 and 1835 applied the variational principle to the classical Lagrangian function. To obtain the Euler or Euro Lagrange equations in their present form, Equals Jacobi and Morse equals, in 1842, Carl Gustav Jacobi tackled the problem of whether the variational principle always found minima as opposed to other stationary points. Most of his work focused on geodesics on two-dimensional surfaces. The first clear general statements were given by Marston Morse in the 1920s and 1930s, leading to what is now known as Morse theory. For example, Morse showed that the number of conjugate points in a trajectory equaled the number of negative eigenvalues in the second variation of the Lagrangian. Equals Gauss and Hertz equals, other extremal principles of classical mechanics have been formulated, such as Gauss's principle of least constraint and its corollary, Hertz's principle of least curvature. Disputes about possible teleological aspects, the mathematical equivalence of the differential equations of motion and their integral counterpart has important philosophical implications. The differential equations are statements about quantities localized to a single point in space or single moment of time. For example, Newton's second law states that the instantaneous force F applied to a mass M produces an acceleration at the same instant. By contrast, the action principle is not localized to a point. Rather, it involves integrals over an interval of time and an extended region of space. Moreover, in the usual formulation of classical action principles, the initial and final states of the system are fixed, for example, given that the particle begins at position x1 at time t1 and ends at position x2 at time t2, the physical trajectory that connects these two endpoints is an extremum of the action integral. In particular, the fixing of the final state has been interpreted as giving the action principle a teleological character which has been controversial historically. However, according to W. Yorgro and S. Mandelstam, the teleological approach presupposes that the variational principles themselves have mathematical characteristics which they de facto do not possess in addition, some critics maintain this apparent teleology occurs because of the way in which the question was asked. 
by specifying some but not all aspects of both the initial and final conditions we are making some inferences about the initial conditions from the final conditions, and it is this backward inference that can be seen as a teleological explanation. Teleology can also be overcome if we consider the classical description as a limiting case of the quantum formalism of path integration, in which stationary paths are obtained as a result of interference of amplitudes along all possible paths. The short story Story of Your Life by the speculative fiction writer Ted Chiang contains visual depictions of Fermat's principle along with a discussion of its teleological dimension. Keith Devlin's The Math Instinct contains a chapter, Elvis the Welsh Corgi Who Can Do Calculus that discusses the calculus embedded in some animals as they solve the least time problem in actual situations. More fundamental than Newton's second law, according to Richard Feynman, the principle of least action is mathematically more specific than Newton's second law and more fundamental in theoretical physics because it explains a wider range of physical law. You can derive Newton's second law from least action, but the converse is not true without also applying Newton's first and third laws and disallowing non-conservative forces like friction. By being more specific and thereby explaining only conservative forces, the principle of least action is able to solve problems Newton's second law can't, but the converse is not true. The principle of least action can be used to derive the conservation of momentum and energy if its symmetry in space and time are assumed. It correctly does not allow non-conservative potential fields, but Newton's second law allows for them by allowing for non-conservative momenta and forces which are not fundamental forces. The mathematical basis for the difference is that Newton's second law allows for momentums p, t, equals q, t, plus c where q, t, are conserved momenta allowed by least action and c is a constant that can be non-zero in Newton's second law but not in least action. The constant allows for non-conservative momenta and therefore non-conservative forces and potentials in Newton's second law. Newton's second law explains conservation of energy and momentum and can be used to show equivalency with least action when forces are properly conserved, for example when forces are summed to zero in accordance with Newton's first and third laws and when accounting for heat generated by friction. Derivations of Lagrangian and Hamiltonian methods do not begin with Newton's second law, but with a more modern mathematical formulation of it that requires forces to be conservative. See also Notes and references. External links. Interactive explanation of the principle of least action. Interactive applet to construct trajectories using principle of least action. Georgi Jordan, Georgiev, 2012. 1. A quantitative measure, mechanism and attractor for self-organization in networked complex systems. In lecture notes in computer science. F. A. Coopers and P. E. Hayegard. IFIP International Federation for Information Processing, Proceedings of the Sixth International Workshop on Self-Organizing Systems, pages 90 Euro 95, Springer Verlag. Georgi Jordan Georgiev and Iskran Jordan Georgiev 2002, 2, The Least Action and the Metric of an Organized System, in Open Systems and Information Dynamics, 9, 4, pages 371 to 380.